morning, everyone, and just apologies for those watching on Facebook. We were too busy chatting at the back and hadn't noticed the time. Um, so a really warm welcome to you all here in church, as well as those watching on Facebook Live this morning. Hopefully you've all got a copy of our notice sheet. If you wish to go on our distribution list, please contact the office um, and they can, or, or message us via our Facebook page, and they can get you on our email distribution list to receive uh, an electronic copy of the notices. Just a couple of things I want to draw your attention to this morning. Our coffee mornings continue on Zoom after this service and on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Um, and that will be until we are allowed to serve refreshments in church, which according to the restriction um, roadmap, we will be able to serve um, refreshments from the middle of May, so the 23rd, I want to say. Anyway, that's Pentecost Sunday, which is rather a wonderful day to be starting to serve refreshments in church. That will be really lovely. And um, just a couple of dates for your diary. Ascension Day will be evening prayer here on Thursday, the 13th of May. Please book a place if you wish to come to that. And um, of course, Nephi Church will be resuming next month as well on Thursday, the 20th of May. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to worship you. Thank you that we can open your word and listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So all the words that you need are on the screen. If you are using our green books, it is um, service of the word on page 8. Loving God, we gather as your people around your word. Fill us with the Holy Spirit as we sing your praises, hear your truth, and ask for your help. We pray that we may know you better and love you more. For your name's sake. Amen. So let's have our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. So to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in his name. Then they called them to, again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to listen to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further, further threats, they let them go. They could not decide to decide how to punish them, because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man was miraculously healed for over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign God, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did. What your, they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 11. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hard hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So, when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock, one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
this time of year, it's lovely to see all the newborn lambs on the Benicu estate. The mums are contentedly grazing as their babies are jumping around and playing together. The job of a shepherd used to be one of the most important ones on a farm. And shepherds were a different breed from other farm workers. The very nature of the job means you spend most of your time alone, out up in the fields or up in the hills, with only the sheep to keep you company. And the character of a shepherd was distinctive. They had to be content with their own company, able to make their own decisions with no one to discuss things with. They had to have an excellent knowledge of animal husbandry and a store of remedies to cure all ills. They were kind, they looked after their baby sheep. Shepherd's huts, I expect you've seen shepherd's huts, they have a little container where you can put the baby sheep in, the orphan sheep in. They were brave. They had to face down threats that faced their sheep in the wild. In this country, that would probably be wolves um, after the lambs, but in other countries they could face wolves or bears. So shepherds' care for their sheep was all-encompassing. Nothing was more important than the flock even going to church. That had to be put on one side because the threats to the flock would not stop while the shepherd was in church. There's an old tradition that when a shepherd died, he would be buried with sheep's wool in his hand so that when they got to heaven, it could be shown why they'd missed so many services. Makes you wonder if other people took this as well to see if they could get out of it. Out of it. Now, in our reading today, Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. But this story that we heard, we need to see what was leading up to him saying that statement, making that statement. Jesus and the disciples, they were in Jerusalem, and as they walked to the temple on the Sabbath, they saw a man who had been blind from birth. Now, in those days, many people believed that disabilities were the result of sin. It was a punishment for something you'd done. So the disciples asked Jesus who had done wrong, the blind man or his parents. And Jesus answered, neither. And he proceeded to heal the man. But before long, the Pharisees heard about Jesus healing on the Sabbath, which by their law they should not have done. And they took the healed man to task for telling people what Jesus had done for him. They got quite cross with him, and they ended up driving him out of the temple. And when Jesus heard about what they'd done to this blind man, or ex-blind man, he goes to confront the Pharisees. And the story he tells about the Good Shepherd is actually directed directly at them. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. And as he says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And in this story, and in this little bit of the story, Jesus is foretelling what is going to happen to him. In that time leading up to the crucifixion, he was constantly telling people this was what he was going to do and what was going to happen. He is going to be put to death on the cross and that we are the sheep that Jesus came to lay down his life for. He was prepared to die for us. But then he says, the hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. Jesus is saying the hired hands are the leaders of the Jewish people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were given the job of looking after and protecting the sheep, and in this case it means God's people, but they did not really care about them. 
They only cared about the money and prestige they got from their positions. And as soon as things got tough, they were not prepared to put their lives at risk, but would run away, leaving the sheep at risk for wolves. They would not heal them or help the poor or weak, but they left them to fend for themselves, as they had done with the blind man. Then Jesus goes on to say, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And then he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this sheep pen or fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there'll be one flock and one shepherd. He's saying that there are other sheep which don't belong in the Jewish nation. He calls, it a, he calls it a sheep pen or fold. Now, a fold is an enclosed area which keeps the sheep in. And the shepherds would make these up on the hillside. It could be a temporary affair of thorn bushes or branches, which would be put down wherever the, wherever the night they were at the night. Or it could be a permanent structure which they'd make with walls of rock and thorn bushes on the top to keep out animals and there was always usually one entrance which could be easily blocked up or guarded. And in actual fact, the shepherd would probably sleep in the, in the entrance to stop anything getting into his sheep. Over the hillsides, there would be several folds and each shepherd would have made their own or had their own. And when the sheep were being driven up to pasture, they would all come out of their different folds and they would join together into one large flock. So Jesus is saying in this story that the people of Israel are the fold that he's talking to, but he makes it quite clear that there are other sheep outside of this fold that he wants to bring together as one large flock. And by this he means the non-Jews, the Gentiles, us, all those who need to hear about him. It might seem that letting all the different sheep, and we're talking about sheep here, not people, sheep from different folds out would mean that you would never get back your own sheep. But each shepherd had a lead sheep. Sometimes one he had bottle fed because it was an orphan or had been rejected by its mother. This sheep would have a special bond with the shepherd. It would know him, it would know his voice, it would know that he that belonged to him, and it would lead the other sheep back to the shepherd that it knew. The good shepherd knew his own sheep just as well as we know our own children, because for him they were his own children. He says, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Well, as you might imagine, the Jewish leaders were very unhappy about the portrayal of themselves in the story. They worked out that they were being told that they were the hired hands. And also, the people who were hearing it, they were quite divided about him. Some people thought he had a demon in him and was out of his mind, while others said that no one with a demon would do good by healing the blind. We're leading up to the crucifixion here, and people are beginning to ask who this person is. They crowded round Jesus after he told his story, asking him, who are you? Are you the Messiah? But Jesus answered them by saying, I have told you and you do not believe me. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. And it was that last bit the Father and I are one, that really, really upset them. 
They even took up rocks to stone him. And Jesus has to leave very quickly before they could arrest him because his time had not come yet. We were not quite at the crucifixion. So out of all the portrayals of Jesus, the one of him as the good shepherd is one of the most known. We even have him in our east window as the good shepherd. And if you've ever looked at it closely, you will see it says, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. We are Jesus' sheep and he knows us and he cares for us. He's laid down his, voice, his life so that we might live and we can never thank him enough for that. So next time you see a flock of sheep, and if you want to, there's plenty down on the A12 at, B at Benica, remember the Good Shepherd and give thanks. Amen. From whom every family is in heaven and on earth is known. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us to power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our time of intercession. Thank you, Loretta. Psalm 1914. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my of the holy heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, Amen. The Collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ. Faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for all those around the world who suffer from any illness or COVID. We think of India today who is suffering greatly at present. May you guide the right people all around the world to help them who can. And please be with those who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. O God of peace, whose Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, was brought back from the dead to be the great shepherd, Grant that we may be led by him out of darkness and death into the fullness of life eternal through the same Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in all eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for the risen Lord, the Good Shepherd, who seeks out and saves all who are lost. We pray for all who are walking in the valley of the shadow at this time, all whose lives are hard or being made hard, for all being attacked by evil. May they know your love and protection. We remember all who are called to share in the shepherding of your people. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, members of the Church of England, and all Christians. We pray for the work of the Church Army. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to guide all carers and counsellors, strengthen all who are looking after others. We pray for all those who we know who help others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember
remember all who have protected us and guided us. We pray for those who have supported us in times of need, those who have stayed with us in times of darkness. We pray for our homes and our loved ones. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you have entered into weakness, darkness, or trouble this week. We pray for those who cannot pray for themselves, for those who have lost memory or reason, for all who are facing death, especially those who are lonely. May they know the Good Shepherd is with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may we learn to abide in you and know that you abide in us. May we know that nothing separates us from you. We pray for all who have passed through darkness and have entered light and life everlasting. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's join together as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who 
and the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in love and joy and peace to tell others the good news of Jesus. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's just wave goodbye to everyone.